Welcome to the Spooktober Potfig Fest by Ella Mix Mavella. Day 4 Egyptology 101 by Tiger Money. Read by Ella Mix Mabella. Part 2 Settle the Camel Hermione's office at first impression looked like a library exploded. The bookcases lining three of the four walls were groaning under the weight of the books, scrolls, busts and paperwork. The windowsill behind her desk was cluttered with artifacts and more books. It was only her desk in the middle of the room that appeared to be an island of order in the sea of chaos. Draco internally winced at himself for using such a lame cliché to describe what he saw. He removed some papers from a chair and took a seat, watching Granger put her around her office, opening drawers, pulling out books and checking her laptop. In between, she was making calls from her office phone. He tried to calm his erratic heartbeat, slow his breathing and tried to reach a quiet place in his mind. Draco caught the outline of Set on a poster against the wall and his heart began to pound, causing the rush of blood in his ears to drown out all other noise. A god. He had to kill a god. Outwardly, he made it appear to be a great inconvenience. Inside, he was certain this was a suicide mission. Back in the prison, he had made peace with his death. If he had to die, the rest of the world was going to go with him anyway. He had to kill a god. His knees began to bounce, so he stood up and examined the contents on the bookshelves. Amongst the various detritus, he counted four books written by a Dr. H. J. Granger, PhD. He pulled them out and read the covers. It seemed like Granger really was an expert on North African, Middle East and Byzantine and pre-Roman history. Maybe she could help him. He had to kill a god. Malfoy. Her voice cut through the roar in his ears and pulled him back to her. Malfoy. Granger. He replied, not catching her eye, as he returned her book to their shelf. No word on Ziva, but a colleague of mine informed me of a dick that is happening not too far from where you need to be. We can get a lift to the site with the supplies run, but we have to hurry. She scooped up a leather bag and dug through her drawers pulling out some protein bars, two water bottles and a few books to cram into it. Come along, she said, walking past him and out of the office. He had no choice but to follow her. I hope our lift is something civilised, like a port key or a land cruiser, not some smelly camel. Need I remind you that we only have three days until the end of the world. We're wasting time taking a camel. Why not just apparate? It doesn't work out here, he swatted at the camel. Impossible. The landscape keeps changing. If you apparate to a site, you might end up in the middle of a dune. Magic, in general, is a little off-kilter in this area of the world. It made him miss his wand fiercely, and he began to chant under his breath. Akio, wand. Granger, Draco leaned closer to her, speaking out the corner of his mouth. We can't use camels. Don't be ridiculous. They're the best way to get across the desert. Granger climbed onto her saddle and the camel pitched forward, then back as it stood up. Its tail flicked and caught Draco across the cheek. They don't like me, he hissed, stepping back and out of the camel's reach. Sorry, what? Granger called from her perch. He wasn't about to make himself look like an ass in front of the hired help, so he turned away from her and mounted his camel. It twisted its head, trying to bite at his legs. He flicked its ear and hissed for it to stop. Before Draco was fully seated, the camel rose to its feet. Draco clung on and suddenly shuffled into place. They faced the desert to their right. On the left was a wide black stripe of tarmac heading towards the horizon. The supply crew turned the camel's right away from civilization and into the yellow sand of the Sahara. He had to kill a god. That night they made camp close to a rocky outcrop. Fires were lit, wine handed out, and thick stew was dished up for everyone. Draco practically inhaled his meal, his stomach aching in that pleasant way when one has eaten their full. He noticed Granger had only eaten the vegetables, leaving the meaty chunks in her bowl. Is there something I should know? He gestured towards her bowl. She handed it to him with a shrug. I never developed a taste for goat. Draco paused. I never thought I'd eat goat meat, better than I expected. He finished the meat and handed their empty bowls to one of the caravan members. Hermione was sitting against her saddle on a blanket watching the fire. She was chewing on her thumb cuticle. It's alright, you know, Draco spoke up, 
turning to her. What is? Losing? She gave him a skeptical look. We're not going to lose. Granger, a god is about to rise. We have no weapons, no spells. We were as good as dead. Get some sleep now for me. She turned her back to him and did as she suggested. Akio want, he whispered, looking up at the desert sky. Digging up the past never helped anyone. They arrived at the dig site by mid-morning, Hermione being greeted enthusiastically by the archaeologists based there. They ended up sitting around a crowded table in one of the larger tents, drinking water and showing off the artifacts they had uncovered at the site so far. Dr. Badavi? Hermione casually spoke up as she examined a jade scarab beetle figurine. Do you remember a few years ago? There was that excitement when Dr. Madras claimed to have found the penis of Osiris. Dr. Badavi was a handsome man in his fifties, his naturally tanned skin and black hair calling back to his Bedouin ancestry. He let out a hearty laugh. No Egyptologist worth their salt would mistake a common rhino horn dildo for a sacred object like that. Last I heard, Dr. Madras was relegated to teaching at some college in Minnesota. He took a sip of his water and caught Hermione in a piercing look. But what of this collection made you bring that up? This is Sixth Dynasty at best. Osiris is First Dynasty and deeper in the Upper Kingdom. I just recalled that you were the expert in the First Dynasty and I always love hearing you tell a story. And my friend here, she indicated to Malfoy who sat on her left, is new to this part of the world, so hearing the legend from an expert would be such a treat. Dr. Granger. I know when someone is stroking my ego, and I thought you'd be above that. His eyes twinkled. Granger didn't bother to blush, which made Draco think there'd be some stroking of another kind between them in the past. You love it. Now you have a captive audience. She sat back in her camping chair with a smirk. Give me a moment, said Badavi and left the tent. Granger, his Draco, we have two days left. We don't have time for bedtime stories. I don't have access to the books I need. He's the next best source of information, and that is our weapon. Akio, want? whispered Draco. Dr. Badavi returned with a bottle of vodka and poured the three of them a measure each, then settled into a seat. During the First Dynasty, the gods walked amongst the people, giving blessing to the pure, cursing the wicked. The gods were a big, contemptuous family that ran afoul of human emotions. The story of Set and Osiris mirrors that of Cain and Abel, two brothers separated by jealousy. Set, being the trickster god, first trapped Osiris in a coffin and threw it in the Nile, where he travelled all the way down into what we now call Ethiopia. You see, Set wanted a throne, which was not ideal with him being the god of the Red Desert Sand, whilst Osiris was the god of the fertile black soil the people relied on for their crops. He doomed the land to salvation. The years Isis spent looking for her husband, two people experienced a drought like no other. But Avi sipped his drink and cleared his throat before he continued. There are many lessons within Legends of the Gods. One of them is, if you commit fratricide, don't tell your wife. Nephistus, seeing the pain Isis was in, helped to track down the coffin. It was put into a large tree and forgotten about until a local king who was enamored by its size and the aura of power it gave off, ordered the tree cut down and taken to his palace. When Isis explained to the king who was inside the tree, he immediately handed it to her, but opening it, they found the half-rotten remains of Osiris, for even then gods were mortal. Draco and Hermione exchanged a loaded look. The vodka burned Draco's throat when he took a sip. When Seth heard of the discovery, he flew into a rage and dismembered Osiris, scattering his body parts across the Upper and Lower Kingdom. Interesting fact, the place where each part landed became an oasis, helping Isis find parts and reassemble him. With the exception of one missing appendage, Balavi huffed a laugh and took another drink. Being faced with an Oinuk for a husband did not deter Isis. She created the Book of the Living and brought Osiris back to life. But even for gods, messing with the fabric of life is not advisable. Osiris remained on Earth long enough to conceive Horus with Isis, which, considering his missing member, is inconceivable. But Avi chuckled at his joke. To bring balance or Ma'at back to the land, 
the Book of the Dead was created and Osiris was sent to rule the world of the dead. And what happened to Set? Jacob found himself asking Badavi, who shrugged. There are stories of his constant battles with Horus, eventually stealing his eye, which is how we have the Eye of Horus symbol. But nothing is recorded of his demise. Many believe he still wanders the kingdoms. But if he was mortal, surely he would have died at some stage, Draco pointed out. Maybe he went off to die in secret to prevent Isis from chopping him to bits? Many legends point to him being especially attached to his cock. How far is Ombus from here? Romani asked. Ancient maps place it a few kilometers from here, as you well know, Dr. Granger. But we have been surveying the part of the desert for years and have found nothing, which you also know. But Avi gave her a pointed look. I was just curious, shrugged Hermione. How was your dick in every trail? But Avi suddenly asked. Let's just say there's a few more trinkets on the black market these days. She frowned, looking at the scarab she was still playing with. But Avi tuttered. Disgraceful. I take it you've alerted to relevant people. Hermione nodded. No one outside of the museum knows of this stick, so we should be safe. Let's get some lunch, and I'll arrange a tent for you two. Jacob choked on his drink. That's very kind of you, replied Hermione, patting Draco on the back. But Avi drained his glass and left the tent, shouting instructions as he went. Two days, Granger. I know, but I got the information we needed. We leave tonight. Akio won't, he muttered. Draco bit his tongue when Badavi showed him the tent that was theirs for the night. Only one bed. This would have been a bigger problem if they weren't planning to leave the land. But why wasn't Granger being honest with Badavi? Thank you so much, gushed Granger. If it's all the same to you, I need a shower and a nap. Yes, of course. Please settle in. I hope to have more artifacts to examine before dinner tonight. Badavi nodded as he left them alone. A nap! A nap! Forty-eight hours, Granger! panicked Draco. Your stench alone will knock out a god. Go get cleaned up. I'll scourge you for your clothes. Just leave them on the bench next to the shower stall. She pointed him towards a large canvas gazebo that had cubicles set up inside. He clenched his jaw and followed her instructions. Better clean corpse, right? As promised, his clothes were clean when he stepped out of the shower, using the towel Granger had hooked over the cubicle door. Entering their tent, he immediately became aware of the absence of noise around them. Granger was lounging in the large, wide platform that made up the bed in the tent. Close the flap. I cast a charm for some privacy. He did as instructed, but he couldn't bring himself to join her on the bed. I have a theory, said Granger. There was an oasis at Umbus before the temples were built. The dagger must be hidden there in the temple. All good and well, but what exactly is Umbus? A temple city built to on a set, clever to keep the thing that could kill him close by. And how are we going to get there? Bury a camel, of course, she smiled. Of course, he sighed. Akio warned. There was plenty of excitement at dinner. The team had unearthed a chest that had been sealed shut for centuries. The golden plate set into the obsidian lid was inscribed with ancient hieroglyphs. Undo the pure to conquer and restore Ma'at. Intoned Badavi. Anyone else wish to ignore procedures and rip it open? He laughed at his joke. Pack it up carefully and label it so we can x-ray it as soon as we are back in the city. Badavi put the chest aside and excitedly catalogued the various funerary implements and jewellery they found. Draco's fingers tingled as he ran them lightly over the chest. He had the same sensation when a similar chest appeared on his desk. Only... Blaze had ignored him and opened the damn thing, and, well, here he was. Granger, he leaned towards her, keeping his voice low. I think this is related to our endeavor. Hermione quirked her eyebrows and gave the chest a closer look. She sat back with a sigh. Well, we're definitely going to die. What? As with most curses, this one requires a virgin, and aside from my suspicions about Leslie over there... I don't think there are any virgins for miles. Draco felt his throat constricting. Let's, let's say the translation is just a little bit off and they actually mean someone pure of heart. How would that play out? Until I know what's inside this chest, I don't know. She sighed and leaned her elbow on the table, resting her chin on her palm. 
Oh, pity you're not a virgin. It would make this whole thing easier. Yeah, pity. He licked his lips nervously. It's a bit too convenient, don't you think? Us finding the exact same chest as the one in my house here. I like to think it's Isis giving us a helping hand. Her eyes became distant and slightly misty. Draco took the hand, resting on her lap, and squeezed. I'm sure Ziva's fine, and that Isis is giving her a helping hand too, he said. Granger simply nodded, and squeezed his hand back. Draco cleared his throat, fighting the feeling of helplessness, threatening to overwhelm him. Why this? he asked, reaching for his glass so he didn't have to look her in the eye. Saving your life in the world? She raised her eyebrows at him. I already know why you do that, some genetic defect associated with being a Gryffindor. I meant this, the archaeology. I just sort of fell into it, you know. I came here to get away from all the politics after the war, and I ended up volunteering on a dick and made friends with Ziva. Ended up writing my doctoral thesis here, and the rest is... One long progression of digging up artifacts and chasing down smugglers. No time for family, then, she laughed. <laughs> no, Malfoy, I'm not married. But surely you should be by now. The joys of no longer having a father is that the only person sighing sadly about me being single is my mother. His heart clenched at the thought of never seeing her sister again. Is being single a full-time job for you, or do you actually contribute to society? Don't mock the idle rich. We bankroll your need to dig up the past. Granger stuck her tongue out at him, and much to his surprise, it brought a laugh to his lips. Fine. I am what muggles call a venture capitalist. I invest in businesses as a silent partner, which means I never have to actually do a day's work. Granger sighed. <sighs> An honest day's work never hurt anyone. And I've never hurt anyone with my businesses, so also your rent about social responsibility. You have no idea what my portfolio looks like. I'd rather you kept your portfolio in your pants. Thank you very much. Her tone was uppity, yet teasing. My portfolio has left many speechless and many others screen with envy. Please, we're trying to eat here. Lizzie complained from the other end of the table. Thank you for listening to today's day after Spooktober Podfig Fest. This story was written by Tiger Mine. Thank you all for listening and stay tuned for more spooky content. If you would like to stay up to date on upcoming stories, you can follow me on AO3, YouTube, Instagram or Tumblr.